I'm on a mission to have my health span match my lifespan. You know, I just, I don't want to spend years and especially not decades of my life living but being sick. You know, I, I, I just don't want that. But it's really hard sometimes for my activities, particularly regarding eating, to align with that mission of having my health span and lifespan align with one another. Um, you know, I, I've struggled, I, you know, I struggled with a very severe eating disorder for many years. And, you know, my bulimia is considered to be in remission now because I haven't purged um, for many years. But the remnants of my eating disorder still linger. I still have I'm still obsessed with food. I, I think about it all the time. I, I still binge from time to time. Um, you know, I still will eat in secret every once in a while. And, and I, I tend to be pretty good about this because I, I live by myself. I kind of control my environment. I, um, I eat a vegan diet and I eat mostly a whole food, plant-based diet. So everything in my home is really healthy, but this weekend I'm I'm staying with my family in my hometown, and it's of course lovely, you know, spending time with my family, but in some ways it's hard because I can't. It's in an environment that I don't have control over, and and especially like at my grandmother's house, she's an amazing baker, and she ate she made these molasses cookies and as soon as I arrived they were fresh out of the oven and of course they were amazing and I, I couldn't stop eating them. You know, and and the whole time I'm wanting to not eat them, but I do want to eat them. I wanna stop eating them, but I don't wanna stop eating them. And that struggle between wanting to and not wanting to is it's like a, a battle because as much as I want to live a long healthy life because of what I know about the human body I understand why sugar has such you know addictive properties as it does you know it sends off all these alarm bells in your brain saying oh yes give me more you know because it stimulates our reward centers the same way that like cocaine would and and it's why it feels good when we eat it and why we keep coming back for more and so when I'm home you know I get a little stressed out about what I'm going to eat when I'm home and what I'm going to be around. But at the same time, when I'm like, have all these sweets near me, I'm like, I want to garble them down because I get access to them, you know, so infrequently. And, and now I'm, you know, I'm lucky my hometown's in the Adirondack Park and, um, and we have a lot of walking trails around. So I'm out walking right now and, um, and I'm reflecting on this, this battle of wills, you know, that's going on inside of my brain between the part of me that wants to be healthy and abstain from eating, um, you know, unhealthy foods or at least minimize my intake and the part of me, particularly my brain, that's saying, yes, give me more. This tastes great. And it's hard because as I'm walking, I'm reflecting and there's such a mixture of feelings that's going on inside of me. You know, I'm wavering between trying to be compassionate toward myself and, you know, and, and trying to say, you know, I do it so infrequently, I eat sweets so infrequently, I splurge on these kinds of foods so infrequently, but at the same time, it's, it's filling me with shame. I have feelings of shame over, man, I'm repeating old patterns, and, and part of my job as a coach is to, you know, help people to stop um, unhealthy patterns. And so whenever I engage in an unhealthy pattern, there's part of me that then cycles through imposter syndrome. Like who the hell am I to be, you know, talking to people about how to change habits, you know, beliefs and, and old patterns when here I am reverting back to an old one. And then, you know, so on my walk, sorry, it's very buggy out today. So if I move around, I'm trying to get the bugs away. <laughs> um, 
So I go through that whole thing, like, who the heck am I to be talking to people about helping them to break patterns? But at the same time, I have to remind myself while I'm out here that that's the message that I have to continually remind myself and my clients and my followers and you who's listening is that is that there are always going to be things that are going to trigger us to engage or at least want to engage in coping mechanisms that served us. I mean, that's the thing, that the reason we turn to things like food and alcohol and sex and all these other things is because, well, they feel good if even for a moment they serve as a distraction if even for a moment. And we wouldn't do them if they didn't work, if they didn't serve us. And so it's, you know, I think in many times when I revert back into old patterns, it's a way to remind myself that the work never ends and, and that that we're always going to have temptations and there's always going to be things that are going to draw us back into our old comfort zones. And, and when we slip back you know, reminding ourselves of that, we did it for a reason and, and we reverted to these patterns in our past. We had them in our past for a reason and they stuck around for a reason and, and having to remind ourselves that, well, tomorrow is a new day and and we can do better and and so I'm gonna work my way to my car and on my way back to my mom's house and that will be my message to myself trying to ingrain into my head as I've done many many times to just remind myself that I'm doing the best I can in this moment and and if I slip up or get sidelined revert back a little that I'll just keep going forward again tomorrow. And if I mess up tomorrow, then I'll do better the next day. And that's why I'm, for so many reasons, I'm grateful for another day. But I'm grateful when I have a chance to do better going forward. And so so I always, um, part of my practice when I slip up is to apologize to my body um, for when I'm not treating it you know, with the deserving, um, respect, the respect that it deserves for being my one and only body. I apologize to it when I'm not taking care of my body. And then I, I try to just do better for it the next day so it can serve me. You know, I, again, I, I have a vision for my life and, and being ill for, for decades of it is not part of my vision. So I have work to do to make sure that, you know, how I end my life is on my terms, and it is largely in my control. And so when I slip up, um, it's just another opportunity to remind myself what I do have control over. And some days, it's going to be hard to practice that control, and I might lose the battle. But then I can just wage war again the next day. <laughs> and, and maybe, you know, tomorrow I'll be stronger and, and I feel that. So I, I didn't do great at taking care of my body this afternoon. I ate far too many of those wonderful molasses cookies. Um, but I'll do better tomorrow. And so I guess that's my main message today is that for how important it is for us to practice compassion. Um, you know, to ourselves, we're our worst critics and... You know, we get so worried about how the rest of the world brings us down, but actually we bring ourselves down more than anyone else does. And so we got to work on taking care of ourselves. And so I got to practice that today. And if you need to as well, I encourage you to do so. Thanks for listening.